Well, thank you very much, Eric, for the wonderful introduction. It's exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> I tell you, it is fantastic to be back. I'm sorry, I have a sore throat, so that's why I talk a little funny. I, d I don't try to act out to be the Terminator right now. <laughs> but it's fantastic to be back here in Copenhagen. This is a place that uh, is literally one of my favorite cities to visit or to come here and do business or to just come here and uh, do some sightseeing and uh, all like I used to visit my very good friend Bjorn Winblad, a great artist who I have collected over the years. Uh, or to come here because of your amazing clean energy action that you have here in this town. I mean, just since 1990, Copenhagen has reduced its CO2 by 40% while you saw an economic growth by 50%. In California, <clears throat> In California, we use Copenhagen as an inspiration. As a matter of fact, when I became governor of California, I looked very closely at all the great action that took place right here in Copenhagen. And we copied a lot of things. If it is the solar uh, project, 100 uh, million solar roofs, or if it is the tailpipe emission reductions, or the renewable portfolio, or our commitment to reducing greenhouse gases by 25% by the year 2020, and by 85% in 2050. All of this is because of what you have done over here. Now, because of that, California is now 40% more energy efficient than the rest of the United States. And just show you what that means. If the rest of the United States would be as energy efficient as California, we could close 75% of our coal-fired power plants. But I... <laughs> And I love to brag about those numbers. <laughs> but I just learned that Copenhagen is even 40% more energy efficient than California is. <laughs> so obviously I'm jealous. And even with all of the success that we've had, you are showing us that we can do much better. So again, you are a great inspiration. And this is why it makes sense to have here and to present here today the Sustainy Award in this city, in Copenhagen, which is the hotbed of green action. It is an incredible honor also for me to be asked by Eric to come here and to be a presenter. So thank you very much, Eric, for doing that. When I heard about the Sustainy Award, I said, this will be such a great idea to do that and to recognize these individuals that are doing such great work. This will be such a great achievement and such a great honor to literally win like the Oscar uh, of green action and of the green movement. Not that I would know anything about Oscar since I've never won one, but never mind. <laughs> we don't want to get into that. Seriously though, I want to say thank you to Eric Rasmussen and his whole team for doing such an extraordinary job, for coming up with this brilliant idea, for being such a great visionary, and also for being such a terrific partner to our World Environmental Organization, the R20. Let's give him a big, big hand, please. <laughs> we are here today to celebrate the best and the brightest in the green movement. But it reminds me a little bit on a story when I first came to America. I remember in 1968, I landed in Miami, Florida to win the Mr. Universe competition, only to find out a few hours later that I lost. <laughs> and I was devastated because I won the two previous years and I was the youngest Mr. Universe ever. But how could this happen to me? Here I lose. And on top of that, I had no money. I lived out of a gym bag. I had no friends in America. I was homesick. So I was devastated and I literally cried all night in my hotel room. But in the morning I got up and I put myself together and I said to myself, what the hell am I doing? I didn't come to America to cry. I came to America to chase my dreams. 
I wanted to be the top bodybuilder in the history. I wanted to be the leading man in movies. I wanted to make millions of dollars, and I wanted to be successful. Well, the rest is history. <laughs> so our green movement is at the same crossroads as I was in my hotel room in Miami. It's at an intersection of frustration and hope. One road is a dead end, and the other one takes us to our goal. If you read the latest news about climate change, you may think that we are in the midst of one of those long, dark nights of disappointments and tears. You may think that we have failed. After all, the U.S. Department of Energy has just released the numbers that in 2010, we increased our CO2 output by 6% much more than was anticipated. And you may think that it is a good time to be a pessimist, but I say it's time for the pity party to stop. It is time for us to pick ourselves up and to move full speed ahead. And it is time for us to look around and appreciate of all the extraordinary work that is being done. Just listen to some of the ideas and some of the stories that we are celebrating here today. Mersk, Line, Mersk Line is building the biggest container ships in the world, and the new ships will cut greenhouse gas emissions by 50%. Indigo brings pay-as-you-go solar power to the developing world. The customers not only cut emissions, but they cut their weekly power bill by 50%. Subaru has turned the automobile manufacturing plant in the United States into a model for recycling. They create zero waste. So I could go on the whole night here talking about success stories like that. One of my very big heroes, Nelson Mandela, once said that it's always impossible until someone does it. Well, the leaders in this room have done it. <clears throat> The leaders in this room are sending a powerful message that we can move forward. The bottom line is, don't wait. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for the international agreement or anything. Yes, we all would like to see an international agreement like a Kyoto 2 or so. But in the meantime, let's not wait. Let's not be frozen. We must move forward. The states, the cities, the private sector, the nonprofits, the academic institutions, the individuals, Let's not forget that the most powerful movements are the grassroots level movements. There will always be the naysayers to tell us it is impossible, but there also are the heroes that ignore them. The day we celebrate those heroes, we salute their optimism and their vision. We admire their courage and their determination. We commend their innovation, and we should all seek to emulate their drive and their will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, before I announce the winner, I would just also like to say thank you very much to Connie Hedegaard for her great vision and for her great determination and for her great leadership when it comes to environmental issues. I've worked with her now for quite some time. I love this woman. She is fantastic. Let's give her a big, big hand. And now let's get to the award. It does feel like the Oscars, huh? <laughs> All right. The winner for the Sustainia Award 2012 is Indigo Pay As You Go Solar. Let's give them a big, big hand. <laughs> 